Provo High School's officials say their students do better when they feel they connect with professional adults, and the programs they're running are helping the students and the teachers make those connections. There's two different types of worms in this area, the red ones and the white ones. People here prefer the red ones because of their unique flavor, and they only come out at this time of the year. Every single element in this altar has a special meaning for the people that put it up. But Rocio says pictures of late relatives like her dad are essential for them to honor and remember them. This investigation by retired judge Anthony Scofield says Steve Trolley violated state ethics law on conflicts of interest, and that is enough for the mayor to recommend Trolley's dismissal. Delicious. Delicious. I could eat a hundred of these. Most people wouldn't plop a crunchy red worm into their mouths, but some folks in Mexico say these critters, called tecoles, make for a tasty snack. I like my clients to eat healthy, for them to eat what God gave us. It's the nature, isn't it? Najera says these bugs mean more than just a small and yummy bite. Every day she goes to the local market to sell these creatures to her warm, craving clients. People look for them. If I don't have tecoles, I don't sell pumpkin seeds either, so I have to have a variety of products. Getting these worms to the market takes a lot of work. Farmers like Felipe Benitez say finding the worms is physically tiring, and digging up the bugs can kill the maguey plants, the only ones where these bugs live. The maguey dries off when we take it out, so now there's fewer of them. There's two different types of worms in this area, the red ones and the white ones. People here prefer the red ones because of their unique flavor, and they only come out at this time of the year. Once they get those worms, they simply put them on a pan and grill them. Some people also prepare a special sauce with them. Complete or smashed, white or red, but not everybody likes the tecoles. I can't even see them because they gross me out. They scare me, the way they move. I would never eat a worm. I think if you eat one of them, you get really drunk. I thought they were the ones that came in the mezcal, not the ones that people eat. I didn't know you could eat them. Even though many people say that tecoles don't look like their everyday meals, some of them decided to check for themselves and find out if they taste better than they look. It doesn't taste like anything. I, I didn't find the flavor. It tastes like something fried, crunchy, like a french fry, but not as salty. I love them. I love them. Eating these worms will not likely replace chips, pretzels, or other fast food snacks. But those who acquire a taste for grilled tecoles say their finger licking good. In Puebla, Mexico, Alfredo Carrera, 11 News. The report says that when Councilman Steve Thurley learned that the city might buy this mobile home park on the southwest side and redevelop it into an intermodal hub, he set the wheels in motion to buy the park before the city did. That's just one of the five land projects around Provo where the retired judge who investigated says Thurley violated state ethics law. Thurley is already facing felony criminal charges regarding these deals. But Provo Mayor John Curtis says state law requires him to take the lead on Turley's conduct as a council member. They did not do the ethical side, so I, by state law, had to initiate that state that ethical uh, investigation. It took us about 45 days to complete. It's now complete, and I've passed it on to the council with my recommendation. My recommendation was for dismissal, but it's non-binding. But Turley says he disagrees with Scofield's findings. In a written statement, he says he's met the high ethical standards that people of Provo expect of him. Turley's lawyer also says the speed of the investigation gave them little time to prepare for Turley's hearing with Scofield. The 22-page document shows Scofield and an associate interviewed 36 different people in the 45 days the investigation took. Seven of those were people Councilman Turley himself asked the retired judge to speak with. It also says he spoke directly with Torley for more than nine hours over two days. Maria Lopez came from Mexico 11 years ago, determined to live the American dream with her family. She says things were good when she first arrived, but now her personal budget is pretty tight. Before, I used to earn more than $500 a week, but as soon as the economic crisis came, I didn't see that amount anymore. Sometimes I make 70, sometimes 100, sometimes 150, depending on the sales. Although Lopez has lived in Utah for more than 10 years, she says she has not asked the government for help because she doesn't qualify for any aid program. Her legal status and her fear of law enforcement makes her economic situation even more difficult. 
I don't have Medicaid. I don't have Social Security. I don't have anything. Why would I ask for that help? To have people tell me, you don't have papers. No, there's no help for you. Besides the Medicare and the Social Security, the government also provides people with other support programs like the food stamps that now look like a debit card. More than 10% of people in Utah use that program to afford basic needs, but 50% of the Latin American community do not qualify because of their legal status. If you do not have documents, you do not qualify for any kind of government aid, any type of welfare. Sociology professor Charlie Morgan researches immigration issues at BYU. Morgan says poverty is a generational problem, and considering unavailability of aid programs when measuring poverty provides a better picture of reality. The problem with this, the poverty going up and disproportionately hurting minority groups is that that's not going to affect just the group and the generation now. It's going to affect their kids and their kids, and it, it's, it's going to keep going. The data also shows this is the first time Hispanics rate higher than other minority groups in the poverty scale. But Morgan says the debate on cutting government aid programs to reduce the federal budget would not only affect Hispanics like Lopez, but also other minority groups like older people and children. In Provo, Alfredo Carrera, 11 News.